All right, guys, thank you very much. Uh, you guys prepare some questions. I'll be starting out here. Okay, first, um, Matthew. Uh, marketing as mathematics. Um, I, I was just wanted to ask you, when you're coaching your ventures at 500 Startups, what is actually the thing that, the one thing that you do that makes the biggest difference? What can you really often tell them that if you do this, it's going to get better? Uh, yeah, actually implementing the ana analytics tools properly, uh, it's quite surprising how many startups still uh, either don't have analytics or they don't have analytics implemented properly. And when you're not confident in your data, you really can't do any testing, you can't do any measuring, and you're kind of just shooting in the dark. All right, good. So use the tools. Yeah, in a good absolutely. Way. All right, and um, then um, your speech here, Fabian, um, made me think of my dad. Because Thank he was you. one of the guys that started up advertising in Sweden at Arbmans in the 60s. And uh, he's an art director. And I really want to know that I understand this correctly, because I think maybe telling him what you are saying will be a big blow to him. But uh, So the question is, is the art of advertising dead? No. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it didn't come across like that. So as I said, uh, s e even though you have all these testing tools and you should embrace them and use them, doesn't mean that you can't be creative. Quite the opposite, actually. So these tools mean that you have some constraints in, in, in getting quicker results, which is a good thing. But on the other hand, um, usually if... if uh, if, if you just like test very simple things, you're not going to get the same good results as when you actually sit down with an art director, maybe even, and have the art director come up with a really good idea on how to sort of, for instance, talk to a very specific persona. So she may have an insight in how to actually address their problem in a better way. Now, the beauty, beautiful thing these days is now you can test it and see whether it's actually working. And yes, some people don't like it, but that's the sort of reality we, we have now, and it's a good thing. Okay, so it seems like I can smooth it over a little bit, so we won't get a heart attack right away when I tell them. Okay, good. Uh, all right, questions out there. Raise your hand. There is one over there. Please state your name and your organization and who you want to ask. Hi, my name is Hampus, and I think it both talks were really good. I really enjoyed them. I've done a lot of startups and I interact with a lot of startups and I think this was super valuable for a lot of startups. I have one question. Um, mobile. What you're talking about here are like the sort of very nice clean world of like e-commerce and web where sort of you have nice funnels and I mean they're great tools. If you are in the mobile world, um, yeah, you could run mixed panel but every time you submit you have to wait two weeks for Apple. I mean are there any, do you have any ideas or thoughts? I mean, are there good tools or any tips? Because it's, if you're a mobile company, every time you're thinking about A-B testing, yeah, you have Apple in your, in your way. And the same thing, I mean, are there good tools on, on sort of both sides? Uh, yeah, I can actually jump in. Um, mobile is really hard. Uh, I'll just start with that. I mean, it, like you said, if you're, if you're running a split test, the, the iterative uh, time that it takes to get through each uh, iteration, it's, it's really long term. So getting fast results is difficult. Resubmitting to Apple, Apple basically does not make it easy. Uh, I think the tools are getting better though. Um, and uh, you know, over time we'll get there. Uh, mixed what? panel, Google yeah. Analytics, all the tools I mentioned, they, they were for mobile as well. I don't, I don't have a great suggestion specifically for mobile. Um, you kind of have to hack together uh, your, your testing. I'm not 100% sure. I believe Optimizely now supports better tests on mobile. Hmm. All right. More yeah. questions? Need some coffee, maybe? Oh, there's one. Um, my name is Andreas. Um, I was wondering about the marketing mix. If you look at you paid advertising, for example, versus inbound, um, what, what have you your views on that? I guess it depends on what, what you're doing, but do you have sort of a general starting point? 
I, I'm sorry, I, can you repeat that one more time? Sorry, inbound marketing, for example, as a complement to paid advertising. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I tend to use a lot of different uh, marketing methods as a supplement to paid advertising with the ultimate goal of bringing down cost per acquisition. Um, email marketing, for example, uh, when you're acquiring users, some of them drop off, and you can actually use email marketing to bring them back, therefore lowering your overall cost per acquisition. I think that answers your question, maybe. Uh. Yeah, it, yeah, it was more sort of along the lines of paid advertising as part of the mix in terms of, I guess, how much time and effort you put into the different things. Uh, yeah, I mean... Paid advertising obviously is my job, so I, I spend a lot of time there. And when I approach a new startup, that's what I help them with. So, uh, in, in terms of like overall uh, pipeline of what you have to work on, it all depends on where you are in your business. If you're about to hit that growth curve, then I would be spending a lot of time on on paid acquisition because that's going to help you really accelerate growth. But if you don't have a lot of users yet and you're still pre-product market fit, uh, focus on product. Okay, why don't I have one over here as well? One of our prominent speakers. Hi, hey. um, Emily Best from Seed and Spark. Um, if your goal is engagement more than conversion or conversion plus engagement, um, what are the metrics, funnels, and uh, tools that you like to use or that you would recommend? Uh, Again, uh, engagement is something that will increase your lifetime value of your customer. So the tools I like to use to measure engagement, again, I, I, I use Mixpanel a lot, actually. Uh, Google Analytics, too. Um, that's, that's a great tool for engagement, but uh, once you, you know, trying to measure engagement is kind of going down a rabbit hole. And then when all you're thinking about is like, all right, how do I measure? What do I measure? You kind of get lost in that. So uh, when, when you're early on, and I would, I would just pick a few big uh, potential changes that you're looking to make. Uh, like Fabian said, um, really go for those broad, big changes. And when, when measuring engagement, at the end of the day, you technically could define a certain level of engagement as a conversion, right? If you say you don't, you don't have a newsletter sign up and you're not selling a product, you could say, um, well, basically after talking to a couple of people who visited your website, that if people spend more than two minutes on it, that's a good thing, so that's high quality engagement sort of stuff. So you could define that as a conversion goal um, though of course it's not as rigid as a, of a framework as like cold hard cash, um, but technically you could say that's a conversion as well. Yeah. All right, there's one in the middle. Uh, my name is Mick. Um, thank you for a great lecture. I think it's really great to hear that creativity can actually be tested and that you can actually use mythology to test good ideas. Um, I work a lot with entrepreneurs and, or entrepreneurs as well, you know, people who might have a good idea or think they have a good idea. So I'm just wondering uh, how can you, in that very early phase, on that very early stages, how, how do you see that you can actually test ideas uh, in the sense that you might not even have a website, you might not even be sure what kind of product you should make, but you're like in the creative phase, what do you see that you can work like scientifically or, or with, with the tools that you're talking about to test the potential of an idea? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, I'll dive in quickly. So, I mean, Eric Reese's book kind of talks about that and uh, you, you can use paid advertising to figure out whether your idea is valid or not. Uh, you can also use it to discover who your customer is. So. Before, let's say you just have the sprout of an idea, throw up a quick landing page, put, a, put an email uh, input there, uh, put some advertising up. You can even get away with just spending a f you know, few hundred dollars and uh, get results quite quickly. And yeah. Unbounce is really good for that. Yeah. So with Unbounce and Google AdWords, and let's say, and another $500, uh, within two or three weeks, you can quickly test 
two or three different ideas against each other, or let's say two or three different ways of discussing an idea, right? Just put up a simple landing page with unbounce. You don't need any uh, programming skills to do that. And um, connect those landing pages with, um, with uh, an AdWords campaign, for instance. Uh, and within Unbounce, it will tell you after a while whether your differences are statistically significant. And you'll know, okay, wow, if I call them, if I talk about puppies and not kittens, that works better. Yeah, uh, quickly, another good tool is LaunchRock. Uh, it allows you to really just with a few clicks, no development skills needed, throw up a simple landing page and uh, drive traffic to it. All right, I have uh, just a terminology question to, do, to you, Matthew. You, you were discussing growth hacking as a term here, but you were re really, uh, uh, you told me, no, I'm, I'm not a growth hacker, I'm a di distribution hacker. What's the difference? Uh, yeah, so growth hacking mainly focuses on free methods of growth, um, you know, virality and basically anything having to do with free. And it's, and it's actually a lot of focus on internal methods, like uh, changing certain buttons or getting referrals from your current users. Distribution hacking uh, focuses on paid advertising and then using some of those internal methods to lower your cost per acquisition or raise your lifetime value. Uh, th there's actually a ton of overlap between the two, but the, the main distinction is paid with this uh, distribution hacking. All right. Question. Did I get my question? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so I think my question, hi, me again. So my question is, if you're working with large volumes of users, that's all great, because then you can do this. So I, my previous company was like B2B with potentially 10 customers in the world. Hard to do a lot of data there. Uh, but something that we've thought about a lot about is how you can enrich those content you get. So this is going to be a niche question. How do you, from an email address, what tools do you use to, from an email address or from an IP address, get as much data from a user as possible? Do you use full contact? What tools do you use to get somebody's LinkedIn profile or whatever? Sorry, uh, niche question here, but I, but I need the answer. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've tried a couple, so I'm keen to hear what you've tried. Sure, so first I'd say, ask your users for that information. Try to get it from them. But if, yep. again, if you, all you have is an email address, uh, there's, oh gosh, of course I'm gonna forget the name right now. Uh, there's a couple tools out there where you just upload your list of email addresses and it gives you demographic information. Um, come ask me after, or email I me, will. and I will give you that name, I promise. Do we have time for more? No. I think we're going to end it there. Thank you very much, guys. I think this first session was really make it happen. It was down to manual basic stuff on how to do things, actually, the tools, how to do this. Uh, one last question. If you want to get into your uh, presentations, where can we find them, and can we? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I put my email address up there, so I'll, I'll send it out to anyone who wants it, and then I think it's going to be on the MediaEv website as well. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I guess we can just upload them to SlideShare, for instance. Yeah. yeah. All right. 12.15 is the next session, so be on time. And Thank last you. applaud to these guys. Thank you.